What's up YouTube? This is Sly88Fry here. So I'm just doing a pretty quick react to something I think is actually pretty important. You guys heard of Billy Mitchell, right? The uh, quote-unquote greatest Donkey Kong player in the world. The one who's been proven a cheater but keeps trying to prove people otherwise. How fitting considering what's going on, uh, considering what's going on with the election. <laughs> Hello, you absolute legends. The Billy Mitchell vs. Twin Galaxies legal battle is the gift that just keeps on giving. <laughs> and recently, things have taken an amazing turn. A few months ago, I released a video called The Dumbest Lawsuit in Video Game History, where I broke down the defamation lawsuit that Billy Mitchell had filed against Twin Galaxies for suggesting that his Donkey Kong World Records were not achieved legitimately. Well, this was just one of many lawsuits that Billy Mitchell has filed or threatened to file <laughs> against other gaming organizations and YouTubers. Hell, he even hired a lawyer and threatened to sue me for briefly mentioning him in one of my videos. Yeah. The vexatious nature of Billy Mitchell can't be overstated, and he has been using the legal system as a weapon for years. Yeah, when I made my awful. video covering his lawsuits, people were either afraid to talk to me or wanted to remain completely anonymous in fear of his retaliation. Well, now it appears as though Mitchell is about to get a taste of his own medicine. About time. Twin Galaxies has now responded with their own multi-million dollar lawsuit against Mitchell, citing awesome. misrepresentation, fraud, and racketeering. Twin Galaxies has pulled absolutely no punches and are going after Mitchell's entire fake history. Nice. The allegations in this new lawsuit not only include illegal business practices, but also attacks every major claim Mitchell has made about his gaming accomplishments. Twin Galaxies allege that Mitchell was not the first person to do a perfect game of Pac-Man that he did not receive the Video Game Player of the Century Award from Namco, and that not only were his Donkey Kong scores fake, but he fraudulently used those fake achievements for personal financial gain. Absolutely. But that's not all. The lawsuit also alleges that Mitchell intentionally obscured legitimate gaming achievements from other players in order to increase his own profits. People that are very familiar with Billy Mitchell's past have been calling him a fraud and a cheat for over 20 years, but mm -hmm. until now there were just allegations thrown around without any substantial action behind them. And honestly, what could they do? Until yeah. 2014, Billy Mitchell was the joint owner of Twin Galaxies. It was exactly this power that allowed his disgraceful practices to go on unabated. However, this is no longer the case, and the new owner of Twin Galaxies, Jace Hall, is cleaning house. Good in this job. video, Good we will quickly cover man. the Good most man. egregious accusations in this recent lawsuit. There is a lot of juicy material to cover, and I really hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Now before we go on, Christmas is just around the corner, and yep. today's sponsor, Ridge, has <laughs> okay, got you sure. Now we all know that Ridge make epic compact wallets, and if you haven't gotten one by now, what are you even doing with your life? But Ridge also out immediately is that in wide shipping by going to ridge.com slash legend. No need to have sponsors in a video in the description. A react to this. A very important thing I have to point out immediately is that in this new lawsuit, Mitchell isn't the only defendant. Twin Galaxies is also suing Walter Day, who was also the past owner of Twin Galaxies, huh. along with Mitchell. I've briefly touched on Walter okay. Day in my previous video, The Longest Con in Video Game History, but as of yet, I haven't really underscored how pivotal Day was in Twin Galaxies' corruption. Okay. According to the new Twin Galaxies, Walter Day had full knowledge of, and was even complicit in creating and promoting Billy Mitchell's fake scores. Now, you can't just sue someone for faking video game scores, so we need to understand why this new lawsuit was filed specifically. Jace Hall is in a unique position to put forward this action, okay. as he purchased Twin Galaxies from Billy Mitchell and Walter Day in 2014. All Given right. that the value of Twin Galaxies is directly impacted by the revelations of past fraud, this means that he alone has cause to seek damages from Mitchell and Day. Not only okay. that, but the lawsuit also makes allegations of illegal activity based on those past fraudulent claims. In a nutshell, the lawsuit asserts that Mitchell and Day used their power in Twin Galaxies to accept and promote video game scores that they knew were fake. They promoted exactly. those fake They've scores in order to personally profit, in the form of appearance fees, business partnerships, etc. They also promoted these knowingly fake scores in order to inflate the perceived value of Twin Galaxies so that they could sell it for a huge profit to prospective buyers. 
the latest of such buyers being Jace Hall, who as far as he was concerned was buying a legitimate high score database. Mm -hmm. In fact, included in the purchase agreement was a stipulation that the score database did not contain untrue and misleading statements of fact. The actions of Mitchell and Day essentially amount to fraud. Twin Galaxies also alleges that Mitchell and Day used company funds for their own personal use and to pay off personal debts, which is a big no-no. So that's the context that it's gives cause for the lawsuit Horrible. to begin with. Now let's look at the specific claims about Mitchell's gaming career. The lawsuit begins with the resurrection of Twin Galaxies in 1997. It states, Beginning in 1997, Walter Day and Billy Mitchell conspired and agreed to commit fraud to restore old twin galaxies to prominence and increase the value of the business assets for potential future suitors. Plaintiff alleges that Walter Day and Billy Mitchell conspired to manufacture a persona for Billy Mitchell as the greatest video game player of all time. The problem was that Billy Mitchell lacked the requisite natural skill or ability. <laughs> Throughout this entire ordeal, wow. Plenty of people have stated their belief that Billy Mitchell is a fantastic video game player, but the reality is that he really is not. Compared to the best hmm. players in any game, he falls far behind. If okay. you look at his competition results, he always ranks very low, and has never been competitive at the top level. For a concrete example, we can look to the hmm. Kong-Off a yearly Donkey Kong high score competition that began in 2011. In the All first right. two competitions, he placed well behind the leader. And remember, he claimed to achieve the world record live in just 2010. In 2013, he placed dead last, and from that point on stopped competing entirely. People that claim that Billy Mitchell is a world-class gamer are usually clueless about his competition performances and how he ranks against the other top players. Yeah. People who saw him play live were already skeptical of his world records, long before the concrete evidence showed them to be fake. He was just never that good. We've all heard the claim that Billy Mitchell was the first person Cheater. to attain a perfect score in Pac-Man. However, this is almost certainly not true. Over the years, okay. a slew of evidence has been found suggesting otherwise, and many other Pac-Man players acknowledge other people as getting a perfect score first. The lawsuit states, To fabricate the lore of Billy Mitchell as a great video game player, Walter Day purged other people's scores in the Twin Galaxies score Why database when it was republished in 1997. Scores of Billy Mitchell that were not world records previously suddenly became world records. It's fucked up, for example, man. Billy Mitchell was installed as the world record holder for the Donkey Kong Jr. video game when in fact another player's score was removed by Walter Day upon republication. Uh, you Similarly, do that? Walter Day and Billy Mitchell rejected claims from other players, Bill Bastable being one, that they had achieved a perfect score on the Pac-Man video game, but accepted the claim of Billy Mitchell to recognize him as the first player to achieve such a perfect score. A fellow arcade high school competitor named Dwayne Richard made an entire documentary about how Bill <laughs> Bastable was the first person to achieve a perfect Pac-Man, <laughs> and not Billy Mitchell. This has been fairly well known for many years now. The lawsuit also talks about the video game player to recognize I him be as able the to first watch player to achieve such a perfect score. A fellow arcade high school competitor named Dwayne King Richard made an entire documentary about how Bill Bastable was the first person to achieve a perfect Pac-Man, and not Billy Mitchell. My gosh. This has been fairly well known for many years now. The lawsuit also talks about the Video Game Player of the Century Award. This is the award that Mitchell claims was presented by Namco in September of 1999, and most of us have all seen the famous picture of Billy Mitchell with Masaya Nakamura. And Billy's the most distinguished person in the book because he's the only person to have a full page that recognizes his status as the video game player of the century. He was crowned the video game player of the century at the Tokyo Game Show in 1999. Because you fabricated it. In 1999, after having performed history's first perfect Pac-Man, on stage at the Tokyo Game Show in front of 70,000 people, Masaya Nakamura presented me the Video Game Player of the Century Award. Here is what he actually tricked. happened. The Video Game Player of the Century Award was given to Mitchell by Walter Day in August of 1999, a month before the Namco event. Walter Day and Billy Mitchell then flew to Japan Bastard. and asked Namco for the photo op, saying it would be good for publicity. That plaque Bastard. being given to Mitchell was just congratulating him on his perfect Pac-Man score and advertising the upcoming release of the 20th anniversary version of Pac-Man for the PlayStation. 
Namco never gave him any awards and certainly wow. never said he was the video game player of the oh century. My God, that liars. entire story is completely fabricated. The lawsuit asserts this in no uncertain terms. In 1999, Billy Mitchell and Walter Day worked to suppress earlier perfect Pac-Man scores of other players, and altered the competitive rules to allow for Billy Mitchell to be crowned by old Twin Galaxies as the first person to achieve a perfect Pac-Man score when in fact he was not. To further their deception, Billy Mitchell and Walter Day created an award with the title of Video Game Player of the Century specifically for Billy Mitchell, and successfully developed the false narrative that Namco, the creator of the Pac-Man game had directly given or endorsed Billy Mitchell with that title. The lawsuit then moves on to the infamous Donkey Kong scores, and also the deception contained in the documentary The King of Kong. Yeah. Now it's I've said before up. that The King of Kong is an awesome documentary, and it still is, if you completely disregard the fact that it lies about the world record progression of the game. Mm -hmm. The King of Kong is framed around the competition between Billy Mitchell and Steve Wiebe, and the movie claims that Mitchell had held the record since 1982, but this is not the case. The reality is that Mitchell's score was beaten in 2000 by Tim Serby, with a score of 879,000. This would remain the record until 2002, when it was toppled by Steve Wiebe. Okay. From 2002 to 2003, Wiebe would continue to improve his scores, eventually breaking a million points. However, all of his scores during this period were disqualified from Twin Galaxies for one reason or another. It was touched on in the King of Kong film, but Twin Galaxies had a long history of changing rules on a whim in order to disqualify records so that its marketable players were still on top. Again, the lies spread in the King of Kong were purely to inflate the value of Twin Galaxies and to allow Mitchell to personally profit. It's the lawsuit up, states clearly. During the filming of King of Kong, Billy Mitchell and Walter Day worked to diminish and obfuscate the 2000 Donkey Kong score performance by Tim Serby of 879,200 points, which at the time of performance was a world record, in order to perpetuate the false narrative of Billy Mitchell's prominence as the top achieving competitive figure. Now we get to the juiciest part of the lawsuit in my opinion. Up until now, Twin Galaxies have been very careful in their public statements regarding Billy Mitchell's Donkey Kong scores. They only stated that the performances on his submitted videotapes did not come from an original, unmodified Donkey Kong circuit board. Yeah. But in this new lawsuit, they finally tell it like it really is. Okay. They state, on or about July 3rd, 2005, Billy Mitchell and Walter Day created a fake Donkey Kong score performance of 1,047,200 and submitted it to defeat the legitimate world record of Steve Wiebe with the intent of fraudulently inflating the value of old Twin Galaxies and its so assets up, in anticipation man. of a future sale of the company or its assets. The fraud was technical in nature and the two enlisted the help of Billy Mitchell's longtime friend, Robert Childs, in the commission of the fraud. It makes a similar claim for the next two scores, however now also indicts Todd Rogers and Kimberly Mahoney in the commission of the fraud. To clarify, Rogers and Mahoney were the Twin Galaxies referees that claimed they witnessed the performances. And if you've already forgotten, Todd Rogers is the same person that was banned from Twin Galaxies after many of his claimed high scores were proven to be impossible. Oh my Kimberly God. Mahoney was his then girlfriend. Very convenient. For those mm -hmm. who have been following the Billy Mitchell saga, Robert Childs is the same person who starred along Billy Mitchell in the infamous board swap video, where they pretended to swap boards before Mitchell's alleged world record. It is so important to remember that Mitchell has never been acting alone in these scams, yeah. and it's good to see his associates also being called out for their contributions. Exactly. Now those are all the claims related to Mitchell's video game scores, and if true, would it's expose Mitchell as one of the biggest frauds in gaming history. Bigger than he already is anyway. The lawsuit then goes on at length about how Mitchell and Day profited from this fraud and outlines their illegal business activities. However, as this is a gaming channel, those accusations probably won't interest many of you. There are some extremely damning okay. claims contained within though, including Mitchell's and Day's association with known pedophiles. <laughs> oh, and I almost forgot, Twin Galaxies is demanding 3,333,000 
$3,360,000 for general damages and $3,160,200 in special damages, plus more. Billy Mitchell has wow. caused a lot of damage and pain over the years to many people, and at last, his deceit is finally being exposed. This lawsuit finally. has been a long time coming, and I'm sure it will bring relief to a lot of people. The irony is that if it weren't for all of the frivolous lawsuits that Mitchell filed against other people, this counter lawsuit would have never happened. The wow. new Twin Galaxies only realized the extent of Mitchell's fraud after being forced to investigate the issues further in defense of his original defamation claim. He literally brought it on himself. That's awesome. As always, thank you so <laughs> much for watching. That. That is I awesome. hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. Wow. That is some poetic justice right there. Like, seriously. It's been proven for several years. I'm not exactly sure how long it's been proven that Billy Mitchell is a fraud. It, it just hasn't been proven in a court of law uh, and hasn't been proven to, you know, change it forever so he can't, so he can stop claiming that it's bogus. But I think that time has finally come. Now, for those of you not familiar, Billy Mitchell as they stated, has uh, allegedly has the greatest score of all time in the, on the Donkey Kong Arcade, as well as the uh, first ever perfect score. But as Carl Jops just said, um, Twin Galaxies removed other perfect scores that happened before him and other high scores that happened to put him on top and be more profitable. It's pretty fucked up. It's probably why in the movie Pixels... Um, Oh, man, I forgot the guy's name. He's the uh, little person who uh, is probably most well-known for being in um, in uh, Game of Thrones, but he was also a, a giant little person in uh, Avengers Endgame. Or no, actually, it was Avengers uh, um, Infinity War, actually, but yeah. Um, probably why he p portrayed somebody who looked just like Billy Mitchell in Pixels and actually cheated. They probably based him off, I mean, obviously they based him off of him, but they added the cheating part in there because at the time it was already proven Billy Mitchell had cheated. Um, how it was proven was cheating, in case you're not familiar, is that what happened is um, Billy Mitchell, uh, in, in order to be considered an official record on uh, the Donkey Kong Arcade, you actually have to play on actual Donkey Kong Arcade hardware. I believe if it's emulated, but to the point that it matches the arcade, I believe that's considered okay. But if it's just plain out emulated, and it, it's not. So there's solid proof that it's a false record and, and that it's the and it's not the original hardware. Now, I wouldn't have an issue if he would just admit that, oh, he got this amazing score on an emulator and not on the official hardware. If he just would admit to that, then I think it'd be okay, you know? He wouldn't officially have the world record, but at least he'd be renowned for having a fantastic record, at least uh, in some way, even if it's on an emulator. I think that'd be fine. But the fact is, he won't admit to it. He keeps claiming it's official hardware when it's not. Um, you'd have to watch a comparison video. There's plenty of those on, the, on YouTube. Um, it would show... The, the opening screen where Donkey Kong stang on the girder when, before you start a stage and how... No, no, it would show how the stage loads. And on the original arcade hardware, it loads the stage differently than it does on an emulator. That's how you can tell. And if you, if you see the footage of Billy Mitchell before he gets that high score, it proves it right then and there that he was playing on an emulator and not official hardware. Proving that he lied. Anyways, um, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell icon to be notifications. I'm glad to see this poetic justice here. I mean, I, I just want Billy Mitchell to shut up. I want him to get what's coming to him and to, for once, stop claiming that these records he doesn't own will be forever proven that he's wrong. That documentary that showcases him needs to be taken down. Focus on the truth, not the bullshit that Billy Mitchell and his partner at Twin Galaxies promoted. Please like, comment, subscribe, and, um, and click that bell icon to add me notifications.